In this video, I'll show you how to create a pretty advanced thermostat card. This is also very adaptable because you are quite easily able to add more buttons as you see fit. As always, the full code can be found on the Gumroad link in the description. For this to work, you will need to install button card, mini graph card, and paper buttons row from Hacks. I'm gonna start by creating a custom button card, then I'll give it a basic name and I create a custom field called temp. This is where I'm gonna add the room's temperature and humidity. We need to write three square brackets, return, and then use the state function to bring in both the temperature and humidity sensors. To add more than one entity, you need to use a plus sign in between the two state functions. This doesn't look very good, so I'm first gonna add a degree sign after the temperature. We need to place text inside apostrophes with a plus sign either side. Then I'll add a percent sign at the end. We could then use math.floor and place each state function inside brackets to remove the decimal numbers. But instead of math.floor, it might actually be better to specify that the state is a number. And then use dot to fixed. This way we can decide if we want none, one, or 50 decimal numbers. We can now add some CSS styling. For this, I want to add styling for the grid, the card itself, the name, and the temp custom field. The grid is pretty basic, but I will update it later when we add more stuff. Let's just start with one column and two rows. Add two apostrophes and write temp inside quotation marks, then n inside quotation marks. This create two rows. For the name, I will add justify self start and align self end to move it to the bottom left of its grid cell. Then make the font size bigger and font weight smaller. I'll give the card a fixed height of 160 pixels and a padding of six pixels. This is where I notice that I've done some pretty newbie errors in the grid CSS code. We need to specify grid template areas instead of just grid. I also add grid template columns and set it to 1FR. This will also be updated later. I also realize that I want the temperature and humidity to have a bigger font size. So I move it from the name down into the temp custom field. I then move the name to the top left of its cell and set the font size to 14 pixels. We should also move the name and temperature a bit further away from the edge. So I add a 20 pixel padding to the left of both of them. Now back in the grid CSS. We can scale the grid rows by adding grid template rows. Here I set the first row to be 65% and the second to be 1FR. This works if you spell template correctly. Now I want to make the humidity state much smaller. So I add a span with some styling to the temp custom field. We have to do it this way because they are technically one element. Just remember to use the plus sign and the apostrophes. To make our code clean and proper, we should also add a closing span tag to the very end of the code. Now I want to add a temperature graph to the background, so I'm just going to save this card and start creating a brand new card. I'll create a mini graph card. I'll add the temperature as the single entity. You could probably add the humidity as well, but I don't really think it makes sense to combine percent and degrees into a graph. This is more of a design element than an important piece of information anyway. Then I'll set the color to white. If you have a theme with variables, like mine for example, you could use a color variable instead. Then I set the line width to zero and the height to 60. These two lines need to start at the very beginning. Then I'm going to hide basically everything except for the graph. So set show icon, name, state, legend, and labels to false. To properly make this card a part of our thermostat card, we need to use card mod to hide the border and background. We can just set them both to none using some simple CSS. And that's the graph done. We can now copy this whole code and close the editor. I then go into our main thermostat card again and create a new custom field called graph. If we set this custom field to be a card, we can just paste in the full code of the mini graph card. As long as the indentation is correct, it should show up in the preview. We now just need to add some CSS to this custom field to position it correctly. For this, we need to set position to absolute, the width to be 100%, and we set both left and bottom to zero. Now I want to add some buttons that can control the target temperature of the thermostat. So like before, I'm going to save the thermostat card and start creating a brand new card. This time I'll just select the manual option. The type will be custom paper buttons row. This is a cool card type that lets us add a row of buttons. So under buttons, I'll add the first button. This will use the icon called Chevron up. This card is also very customizable, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. I'll set the layout to just icon and ripple to none. Then I want to style the icon and the button itself. First, I set the color of the icon to white and the width to 22 pixels. I set display to flex and I center it with justify content and align items. Next is the button itself. I set flex spaces and flex shrink to one and zero. And I find a background color for the button. Here you can use a color variable if you use those. Then I set four values for border radius. These will be 50%, 50%, zero and zero. 
This will make the top of the button rounded, but the bottom will stay straight. Then I'm just going to set both width and height to 42 pixels. I then realized that there's quite a few lines of code that can be removed. We can remove layout, flex basis, and flex shrink underneath the button. And align items, justify content and display underneath icon styling. We can also remove the width under the icon styling. We can now copy this first button and paste it underneath, and just change the icon to chevron down. I then paste another button in between the two icon buttons, this one I'll change from icon to name. And for now I will just add a static text. I'll remove the rounded corners by setting border radius to zero. Then we just need to remember to change icon styling to be name styling instead. Now let's add some overall styling. I set display to flex, and I set flex direction to column. This places the buttons on top of each other. We just need to change the border radius of that last button. So just move the two zeros to be at the beginning instead of the end. Not sure if you really need this, but I add flex wrap wrap as well. Now copy this whole piece of code and go back into our main thermostat card. Here, like before, we need to create a new card custom field and paste in the code. I call it BTN1, and I move the code over to fix the indentation. You can use the tab button on the keyboard to do this. The buttons appear behind the graph, so we need to add Z index and set it to 1 on each button. To place it into the card correctly, we need to also define the custom field in the grid settings. So behind temp and n in the grid template areas, we need to add BTN1. Then I just set the size of this column to min content. Lastly, I just tweak the width and height of the buttons. Here I end up with 38 pixels. So far, so good. This is where I personally end up because my thermostats and climate controls doesn't have different modes or functions. But a lot of you have requested a thermostat card with options for changing modes, so let's keep going by adding another set of buttons. Let's save the thermostat card, and for the last time, let's create a new empty card. This will also be a paper buttons row card. We could probably just copy the previous one and edit that, but let's start from scratch. I'll create a button with just an icon, set ripple to none. For the styling, I'll again add a background, and I set the width and height to 34 pixels. The border radius of this first button will be 50%, 0, 0, and 50%. Lastly, let's just set the icon color to be white. Now you can copy this button and paste it however many times you want. Please keep in mind though, to keep it simple, if you add too many buttons, it will eventually take up all horizontal space and just look horrible. Here I just change the icon and set the border radius to 0. We also need to make sure to add the necessary overall styling. This will basically be the opposite of the previous set of buttons, so display, flex, flex direction, row, and flex wrap, no wrap. When you have all the buttons you want, you can again copy the whole code and paste it into a new custom field in the thermostat card. This time I just call the custom field BTN2. Then we need to adjust the grid again by adding a third column. So I add BTN2 after temp and after n. Although it's not necessary, I like to define the size, so I also add min content to the grid template columns code. And that's the design of this thermostat card done. Now what is left is to make all the buttons functional. It's hard for me to show every possible way to do this, because everyone's devices are different. But as an example, I've just set up a drop-down helper with some possible thermostat modes. This is because I don't actually own a thermostat that has different modes, mine are just temperature. Using tap action, we can change between the different modes. And based on that style the buttons. With paper buttons row we actually have to use the old way of triggering actions by using call service instead of action. Again, your device will be different, so you have to figure out how to activate the different modes on your device yourself. This is just an example. Now that we have the action in place, we can style the button based on the state of the entity. So we first need to add the entity to the button, then hide the name that will show up automatically. Then we can use state styles based on the different states of the entity. First one for me is off, and I just add a background color and change the icon color. Then I just copy this code and paste it onto the other buttons, remembering to change the state to heat for the second button and cool for the third one. And the first set of buttons should now be working. For the second set of buttons, I will first replace that static text with a Jinja template. This will display the target temperature of my thermostat. We can just use a simple state attribute template for this. Mine only support full numbers, so I will round it off. But if yours can do decimals, you might want to keep one decimal number. For the up and down buttons, I found it was easier to create two scripts. They just look like this. I had to do this in YAML because I use a Jinja template that looks at the current setting and increases and decreases it by one from there. 
So I have one script that decreases the temperature by one, and I have another one that increases the temperature. And finally, we can call these two scripts from the buttons on the dashboard. And that's the finished thermostat card. This turned into a really long and pretty hard video to make, but hopefully you learned something and found it useful. There's a bunch of other options for thermostat cards, but this looks pretty good to me. I don't personally use the different mode buttons, but it is something that has been heavily requested. Using paper buttons row also makes adding new buttons a lot easier compared to other techniques I've showed on the channel previously. Thanks a lot for watching. Going forward, I will try to upload videos more regularly. Until next time.